I'm gonna do this like I've been doing everything else in these last seven amazing years and tell everybody exactly what my life was like, how I felt about myself, and how I came out of that to where I am now. Running For My Life is a very honest story. The transformation for me, it was almost like an epiphany, if you would. Like, I was living a life that, for me at that point, was very destructive. I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm, I'm drinking these beers and I'm smoking these cigarettes and my life's going nowhere and I'm thinking, my God, I'm 30, is this, the way it's, is this it? I seem so out of control and out of touch even with myself. You know, how am I gonna make this change? What can I do to make a change? And it dawned on me the only thing I could control was my physical well-being. Quite literally, I had nothing to lose at that point. I had heard of ultra running. Obviously, I, I had adventure raced for a few years and, and got my feet and my appetite whetted for adventure sports. And at that point, I still didn't feel like I had a true identity, even. Like, there was issues with that. Like, I didn't feel like I was an adventure athlete, I was a mountain biker, or I was anything. It was that article I read in my chiropractor's office, the way it was worded, the way it was written, it seemed so romantic and so mystical and so just incredible what these people were doing. Pushing their bodies way beyond physical limits and mental limits, I made the commitment to go. I made the decision in that article to go. Every decision is based on keeping running. That's how I do it. That's how I get through these things. For example, let's use the Trans 333. Uh, it was a race in Niger that I did in November 2004. 333 kilometers of running nonstop. You found the water at checkpoints that were situated about every 20 to 30 kilometers apart. You found them with a GPS. So right away, your race strategy is based on just being able to secure those checkpoints, find them, get your water, whatever else you need, and move on. I could talk myself out of any one of these events. It's very easy to do. Look, at in the Amazon, I had abscesses in my feet. It was my second, third race, something like that at that point. Nobody would have faulted me for stopping that race. They would have said, oh, we totally understand. I mean, the dude's feet are like roast beef. I had in front of me to make a choice, to either run or to stop. Every minute, every mile of every race, including when I'm injured, I honestly believe, for me, Running and ultra running in particular is 90% mental and the other 10% is all in my head. I believe that it goes, transcends the physical and that mental uh, focus, if you will, comes from experiencing, doing and getting into that almost tunnel vision where it's not stopping and finishing at all, absolute all costs. If you were starting out to run an ultra marathon, I would say first of all, Make the dream, set the dream, make the decision to do it, then set the goal and let your life live towards that. From a physical recipe standpoint, of course there is the, you know, gradual increases in mileage and all these other things, but first of all and foremost, never be afraid to dream. If your dream is to go and run a 250 kilometer race in the, you know, uh, Gobi Desert of China, well then, by gosh, do it, enter it. If you enter it, you will do it, you'll, you'll do that race.